In this tutorial, we are going to walk you through the Manage Pet Data section, and we are going to show you how to add pets to your account and then make changes to your pets after entering them into the system. To add a pet to your account, you can click on Actions and then select one of the pets from the list. For this tutorial, we are going to walk you through adding a dog to the system. Once you select Actions and then select Add Dog, you will be brought to a page that lets you enter in the pet's basic information. You will notice that you can enter in the pet's name, status, whether or not you want the adoption and foster application to be visible or invisible for the pet, the primary and secondary breed, whether or not the pet is a mix, the gender, and if you know if the parents have any parents or siblings, you can enter that here. If you have a litter of pets that are very similar, you can actually create multiple copies of this pets at once as well. Once you enter in the initial pet information, you can click Next at the bottom of the page. Once you click Next, the pet will be created and will be added to the Manage Pet Data section of your account. We will also create a public profile page for the pet as well. You will notice that after the pet is created, there will be many other fields that you can enter in for each pet. At the top, you will notice there are shortcuts to each field within the pet edit page. To instantly scroll down to the section you want to edit, you can click the corresponding section at the top. As you can see, there are many different fields that you can enter for every pet. This includes the pet description, previous owner information, where the pet was originally found, the date placed in its current location, the date of birth, and the ability to upload up to six images for the pet. You are also able to post a link to a video of the pet, which will appear on the pet's public profile page. And you could enter in physical characteristics, along with the type of animals the pet gets along with, and any ID number the pet may have at the time of intake. Towards the bottom, you will notice that you can select the adoption form and the foster form that will be linked to the adopt and foster button on the pet's profile pages. You are able to set default forms for these two fields under Organization Settings in the Application Settings of your account. Scrolling down even further, you can see that you can allow your fosters to edit this pet, you can assign a microchip to the pet, and you can upload any internal pet documents that you may want to upload. You are also able to add your own additional pet attributes, including behavior tracking attributes, if there's something that you want to track which we don't already list above. To do this, you will select Change Pet Attribute Options, and from there, you can click Add Attribute. If you have any additional questions about this, please see our Adding Additional Pet Attributes tutorial. Once you enter in all the information for your pet, you can click on Save Changes and the information will be saved for the pet. Please keep in mind you can either click the save changes at the top or the save changes at the very bottom of the page. For staff members that are adding pets that will always have a specific description or a specific set of attributes already filled out for the pet, you are able to actually set up these attributes so they are automatically selected anytime you add a pet. To do this, you will need to go into user settings and click on the pet default section of your account. In this section, you are able to set up default settings including where to be redirected after adding a new pet to the system or editing a pet. You are also able to set specific characteristics you want preset for cats, dogs, and other pets. Please keep in mind that any s default settings that you set in this section will only appear for your specific staff account and will not be set for other staff accounts in your organization. Each staff member responsible for adding pets will need to set their own pet defaults under user settings. When setting up your pet defaults, please make sure that you are entering in the proper characteristics for each pet type. You can enter them for cats, dogs, and other pets. To give you an example of how this works, we are going to set all of these to yes. What this means is any time I add a cat to the system, all of these settings will automatically be set to yes for that cat. Once you have all of these settings set to your preferences, please scroll down to the bottom and click Update Defaults. 
Now that these characteristics are set, I am going to go add a pet to the system to show you what it looks like. To add a pet, you will go to Manage Pet Data, select Add New Cat at the top, and enter in the cat's initial information. Once the information is entered, you can scroll down to the bottom and hit Next, and the cat will be added to the system. If you scroll down, you will notice that under Characteristics, you will see that all of these options are automatically set to Yes which are matching the options that I set in my pet default section. Now that you've seen how to add a pet to the system, we are going to show you how to search for and update pet information once it's been added. You will notice next to each pet there is a Manage dropdown. If you click on that Manage dropdown, you will see that there are a lot of different actions you can take with each pet. We are going to walk you through each one and explain how each item in this list works. If you are looking to learn more about a specific item in this list, please use the quick links located in the table of contents within the comment section of this YouTube page. The first thing we are going to go over is how to find the pet you're looking for and then make edits to the pet. To find a pet you are looking for, you can type in the pet's name, ID number, or microchip ID into the field up here. Please keep in mind any ID number you type in, including animal control ID, internal ID, or microchip ID will bring up the pet that you're looking to update. You are also able to type in the PS ID, which is a unique ID we create for each pet when you first add it to the system. Just to show you how it works, if you type in the ID number to the top, we will instantly bring up the pet. And from there, to edit the pet, you can click Manage and then Edit. This will bring you to the pet's edit page that we showed you earlier. Once you are done making changes to the pet, please click the Save Changes button and the updates will be saved. Next, we are going to walk you through how to edit a specific field for a pet without actually going into the pet's record. To do this, you can click Manage and then click on Edit Field. From there, it will give you a list of all the fields that you could edit from this main index. Select the field you are looking to update, select the option, and click Save Changes. Once you do this, that field will be updated for the pet. You will also notice that if you select one or more pets, a bulk actions button will appear at the top. If I wanted to update one field for all of these pets, I can actually do this in bulk actions as well. For more information on how bulk actions work, please click on the tips and tricks for new and current pet establish users tutorial, which is located in the table of contents within the comments section on the bottom of this page. Next, we are going to show you how to assign an adopter or assign a foster parent to a pet from the Manage Pet Data section. To do this, you can click Manage next to the pet you want to assign an adopter or foster to and click either Assign Adopter or Assign Foster Parent. Once you click this, a modal will pop up that will allow you to enter in a contact's email address or name. Please keep in mind that this dropdown is directly linked to the contact section of your account. If the adopter is someone that is not already a contact in your contact section, you will need to click Create New Contact and enter the contact's information here. Once you enter in the contact's details and click Save, the contact will be automatically added to the drop-down above. You will notice also that the adopter's name will appear in this box down here, letting you know that you are assigning Test Contact as the adopter for Scruffy. Once you hit Submit, you will be asked if you'd like to send a message to the adopter. Please keep in mind that this template can be edited in the email template section of your account. If you do not want to send the email, you can click skip. And from there, you are able to upload attachments and documents that you would like to send to the adopter or foster. If you don't want to upload any documents, you can set the adoption date and then click finalize application. This will process the adoption in the system and it will assign the adopter to the pet. Just to show you what it looks like, if I were to search for Scruffy after processing the adoption, you will see that the pet name Scruffy is currently adopted and the current adopter or foster is Test Contact. For a full tutorial on how processing adoptions and fosters works, please see the Adoption and Foster Processing Tutorial, which is linked at the bottom of this YouTube page under Table of Contents, in the comment section. Next, we are going to walk you through how to create and add a bonded pair in the system. When you create a bonded pair, it means that any time you adopt or foster a pet, all other pets that are bonded together will also be fostered or adopted out to the same contact. 
To create a bonded pair, you can select Manage and then Create Update Bonded Pair. From there, you could search for pets that you want to bond to this pet and select them from the list and click Add This Pet. You will notice that if there are a bunch of pets that are already bonded, they will all be added to this pet and then all of the pets will be bonded together. To remove a pet from the bonded list, you can click the Remove button. Once you have the list of pets you want to bond together, click Save Changes and it will update the bonded pairs. As you can see, bonded pairs also appear next to each other in your pet list. Next, we are going to show you how to duplicate a pet that's already been entered into the system. Usually, people want to duplicate pets if they receive a litter of puppies or kittens that look very similar, or they take in a pet that has very similar attributes to a pet already in there. To duplicate a pet, you click Manage, and then select Duplicate from the drop-down list. From there, you can enter in the pet's new name, select the gender of the pet, and check off whether or not you want to duplicate the pet's medical records. From there, click Duplicate, and the pet will be added to the system with the same information as the pet you decided to duplicate. Now that you know how to duplicate a pet, we are going to walk you through how to create an intake summary anytime you add a new pet to the system. To do this, you can click Manage next to the pet you want to create an intake summary for, and click Create Intake Summary. This will bring you to a page that lets you enter in any medical intake information for the pet. If you would like to track other fields that we do not list on this page, you are able to add these fields under the Tag and Dropdown section within the Intake Summary Attributes area. If you have any additional questions about intake summaries, please email support at petstablish.com. Next, we are going to show you how to print a cage card for a pet and edit the fields that you want showing on the cage card. For those of you who want to export multiple cage cards at once, for those of you that want to print multiple cage cards at once, we recommend checking off all the pets that you want to print the cage card for and using the bulk actions at the top. From there, you can click Save Cage Card, and it will bring you to the page that lets you view the cage card and print it out. If you want to customize your cage card, you can simply click the Customize button right here. And from there, it will bring you to your user profile. At the bottom of your user profile, we have cage card settings. Here, you can select up to 18 fields that you want shown on your cage cards. Once you have the fields set, you can click Save. And now, anytime you go to print out a cage card, those fields will be selected. If you would like to just print a cage card for one pet, you can click Manage next to the pet that you want to print the cage card for, scroll down, and click Print Cage Card. This will bring you to the same page, and from there, you can select the different sizes and hit the Print Now button to print the cage card. A few other fields just to note at the bottom of the Manage Pet Data drop-down are the View Public Profile page, which will take you to the Pet's Public Profile page here, the View Medical Record page, which will take you to the page that lists all of this specific pet's medical records, and you will notice that there is a Delete option which allows you to delete any pet that was mistakenly added to the system. If you have our gold package, you will also notice that there is an option to view a pet's activity log. This will actually let you know the last staff member that made an update to the pet and what changes were made when they made the update. If you have any additional questions about the Manage Pet Data section, please email support at petstablish.com.